95% of humanity is right now, level one. Now, there are a couple of unique things about level one. Level one is all made up. We made up, our forefathers made it up, and they trained us to take on these constructs. If you believe in nine to five, you believe in corporations, you believe in mindfulness, you're level one. There's no good or bad or judgment in level one. The important thing is we are living in a world of mental constructs. But there are a couple of problems in level one. You see, in level one, we tend to be at what some people call the victim stage. We live in this world of constructs, but we have forgotten that we can mend, we can fix, we can mold this world. And so rather than go out there and try to change this world, we react like a victim. He said that and it hurt me. My government is keeping me down. The world is like this. And most people live like that. They feel helpless in the face of the, this giant seven billion human being planet that we live on with so much happening all the time. But at a certain point, you start waking up. And when you start waking up, that's when you start getting to level two. I call level two the state of the culture hacker. Because here's what happens at level two. At level two, you start questioning culture. Now, what is culture? Culture is nothing more than all our human beliefs and all our human rituals and practices coming together. But culture isn't just religion. Culture is our ideas of getting a college degree to be successful. It's our ideas of joining a corporation, of being an entrepreneur. All of these are cognitive concepts which come from culture. But the thing is, when you get to level two, you start developing an idea that culture is an absolute truth. And you can hack it. You can bend it. You can mold it to your own desires. In the words of Steve Jobs, you realize that everything in the world around you was made up by people no smarter than you, and you can change things. And when you get this, said Steve Jobs, you will never be the same again. I love that quote, but that's what's happening at the level of Culture Hacker. Now at Culture Hacker, something interesting begins. The world of questioning. We start questioning. Most people don't question because, you know, when a kid grows up and they start asking their parents, why, 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 why? Most parents will simply say, because I told you so. But, so we tend to kill that ability to question at an early age. But most of you are here because you question. If you're watching this as a video on YouTube, you're curious, you're beginning to question. Congratulations, you are already most likely at level two. So level two is the level of questioning. But something else happens at level two. At level two, not only are you questioning culture, but you begin to see that the world around you is bendable. You don't like the nine to five? Great. You become an entrepreneur. Or you start a company with flexi time. You don't like the idea of marriage? Great. You come up with your own ideas of how a man and a woman should relate. You don't like the idea of college degree? No problem. You drop out and start your own thing. You begin to, culture, to question the conventions of culture. And this is where an important insight enters your head. Life can happen to you or life can happen from you. When you grasp the idea that life is within your control, that you have the ability to bend reality, you're at level two. Beliefs are hackable. Beliefs are swappable. Now remember, culture is nothing more than beliefs plus rituals. So when you learn that beliefs are not you, beliefs, in fact, possess you, but those beliefs can be plucked out and replaced with more empowering beliefs, you have started to understand this phrase that life can happen to you or life can happen from you. You can create life through the process of questioning, of hacking beliefs and filling your mind with empowering beliefs, not necessarily the beliefs from your parents, your school, your education, your religion or your culture. You identify the difference between a rule and a brule or a bull rule and you start to see that we are swimming in a sea of both rules that we can choose to question and ignore. Now at this point, something interesting happens. The idea that your thoughts can create your reality. This is not just a mystical statement based on mumbo jumbo or the law of attraction. If you believe in that, that's great. That's a good belief. But you can literally question and shift reality because you can question the cognitive plane. Most of the world we live in right now is nothing more than ideas which may have already hit their expiration date, but which we are still playing with. So now you get to toss out that expired idea out of your refrigerator and put in a fresh one. Now at this point, something interesting happens, right? You're at level two, you're the culture hacker. 
and you start growing at an accelerated pace when you get to level two. So your growth, if it's like this, when you get to level two, it starts growing like that because you start seeing that the world is under your control that you can question. And I want to share with you a really important piece of wisdom that I learned from Michael Beckwith. He spoke about an idea called Satori versus Kensho. And he said this, right? This is one of the most powerful ideas I've learned. Michael Beckwith said that you can learn and grow in one of two ways. You can grow through Satori moments. Satori moments are moments of sudden awakening. This is when you're meditating and all of a sudden you have this feeling of connectedness with the entire world. Now, Satori moments are rare. They are, ran they are powerful awakenings, but they are rare. Most people grow through Kensho. Kensho is growth through pain. So someone breaks your heart and it's painful, but you learn to be more resilient. You learn self-love. You learn how to have a healthier relationship. You end up hospitalized, but you grow through Kensho and you learn to take better care of your body. You might lose a business. Boom, Kensho hits you, but you learn to invest in your growth, learn new business skills, plan better, and you launch that new business to be successful. So both Satori and Kensho are nothing more than incredible ways for you to grow. But when you understand the idea of Kensho, you know, every time pain hits you, I know that it changed my way of dealing with pain. Every time pain hits me, I'm like, damn, and I curse. But I know that it's just a way to kick my butt and some great learning is going to come from it. That's an incredible belief to have, the belief that Kensho is really nothing more than the universe's way of pinching you to get you to turn to the right direction. Isn't that amazing? And then there's Satori. So Satori also is a great way to grow. It's a little bit rare, but it still happens. Now, as you go through enough Kensho and Satori, something interesting happens. You've started questioning everything about the world. And when you start questioning everything about the world, including some of the fundamental truths, be an entrepreneur, get a career, you hit level three. Now at level three, in Michael Beckwith's words, something very unique happens. You stop getting obsessed with goals, with even the great goals that society says you need to have. Instead, you become a servant to a higher calling. Those are his words. So let's look at level three. Level three is what I call the state of limitless. And I wanna share a really interesting thing that happens at level three. Inspiration leads to intention. At a certain level of waking up, you're tapped in, you're tuned in. You are not separate from life force or the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. You are one with it and you get inspiration. You get downloads and these downloads are what design your intention. So you think you came up with a goal to write that book or start that company or serve that course. Bullshit. Someone was speaking to you and planting that in you. And whether you call that life force or universe, you were chosen. And your job is to just take the order and make it happen. So the analogy is this, right? And this is another belief that I want to discard. Let me share with you this analogy, the compass and the rocket. Most people set goals and then they rocket towards those goals. They decide I'm gonna do this and this and this to get to that goal. But when you get to stage three, you don't just think of a goal and rocket towards it. You first tune into an internal compass to find out if you're pointing in the right direction. What if that person you want to be with isn't really the person you're meant to be with? What if that school that you want to get into isn't where you're going to meet your future soulmate or your future business partner? When you get to level three, intuition or inspiration guides your intention. And that was one of the most powerful new beliefs that I developed in the last couple of years. Now, when I started doing that, things changed. When that inspiration comes, no matter what people say, no matter how crazy it is, you want to listen to it. And if you're at level three, know that you want to start moving towards it. Now, when you do this, your life starts changing. This is when you truly start living a mission oriented life. And yes, happiness is amazing, but you can get happiness from smoking a joint. Real, real, real. The real goal in life, I believe, is fulfillment. Nothing, 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 nothing makes you as happy when you're living a mission-oriented life. And that mission is designed to push the human race forward. 
One of my most favorite quotes is, business people do it for the dollars, but real entrepreneurs, they do it to push humanity forward. But you get there when you're listening to that inspiration, the universe picks you and you're ready to move.